welcome to the what the futures podcast episode number 16 of course each and every episode is brought to you by our friends over at john deere and you know out here in western canada where we see a lot of different crop conditions fortunately our friends at john deere have a whole new lineup that can handle any crop in any condition there's three new high horsepower 9RX tractors. There's a couple of new combines, a new high tech S7, and of course the X9 combines. There's even a new C series air cart. And I know this is the one my buddy was texting me about the other day. He's quite excited about the air cart. Check them out for yourself, folks. Head over to johndeer.ca. See what's coming our way this year. Lots of exciting equipment here at uh, John Deere. Uh, all right, folks, uh, let's set up the show here a little bit. Um, I've got some mailbag questions, so thank you uh, so much to Aiden, Brad, and Chris uh, for asking a, a couple of questions here. We actually uh, we have a few people in the draw for some canola seed. We're going to give that away next episode from our friends at Pioneer Seeds. That is, of course, Jacob and Becky Boychuk of Tower Farms. They're the agency that's been stepping up and helping out the show. Um, so we got the mailbag. My hot topic, I'll just chat crop insurance numbers for a second and the influence on acres. Uh, my headline of the week, uh, Dr. Cordonier's latest in uh, the Brazilian soybean production number. Uh, after that, we can talk uh, crop prices, futures a little bit. And then for eating our veggies, we're going to actually talk about a presentation I did uh, earlier this week, I've got Brett Waltz with BAMP WX, and I've got my mom making her podcast debut. She's a travel agent with Marlin Travel. We're going to talk about Nashville. As you know, the podcast would love to send you and a friend to Nashville, Tennessee. All you have to do is ask me a question. Ryan at whatthefuturespodcast.ca. That's my email. Ask me a question about whatever, crop markets, inputs, uh, equipment stuff, whatever it is, anything farm related, send it my way. It's as easy as that. We're going to give away a trip to Nashville, flights, hotels. That's all you have to do. And uh, it, it couldn't be easier, folks. Couldn't be easier. All right. Uh, of course, you can follow our journey across social media. We're on X, we're on Instagram, we are on LinkedIn, Facebook. We're on just about everything. And soon we will be on TikTok. Apparently, I'm getting old, but I need to, you know, get onto TikTok. That's where it's at. And uh, yeah, got to get after it. All right. So let's get going here. My positive moment of the week. I only wrote down one for this week, which is strange, but I think I had three last week. So I guess we're, we're, we're evening out here a little bit. Um, but I got in front of a group of farmers. I've done a little bit of presenting here lately, but this was my first uh, well, it was Tyler, Tyler that reached out to me and he said, Ryan, come talk about markets to a group of farmers here. And I said, okay, like five or six. He's like, there's going to be 50. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I used to do these presentations all the time, uh, but my last real like market chat was back in uh, like 2022, like just about two years ago, actually, I did a little tour of, of speaking events and my presentations I'm not the smartest guy out there, right? So I don't put up a lot of charts and I don't put up a lot of S and Ds and stocks to use ratios. Like I, I honestly, I don't do a lot of that. I It's more about having a conversation about what's going on in the markets and then trying to give a sense of, you know, what, what things might look like in the next little while. And, uh, you know, I went through that presentation and I think I offended some people at, at certain points because I certainly did not say what folks wanted to hear. It was a little bit of a spicy presentation at times, uh, but we did end it on a positive note. And if anyone here watches Ted Lasso uh, or Ted Lasso on uh, Apple, it's a great, it's three seasons. It's a soccer coach thing, an American coach going over to, um, to coach. I can't remember the name of the team now dropping, uh, Losing my mind here today. But anyways, it's a great show. And and he's a big motivational guy. So we had that Believe, you know, he had the Believe poster and, and on the last slide. And I just told growers that it's been tough. 
uh, farmers have felt frozen in their crop marketing plans. Okay. I see it. When I chat with growers here, you are sending out these vibes where you're paralyzed in, in fear when it comes to crop marketing. But I believe, I believe in that room, in that group, and I believe in you listening as a farmer that you're going to work yourself out of this state of, of uh, paralysis or frozen, being a frozen uh, marketer and, and start to build confidence in your marketing plan. So I, I hope that I was able to give them a bit of confidence, but I loved it. I love getting in front of a group of growers. We have lots of questions, good interaction. And, um, I have a bunch more coming. I've, I think I've got five on the calendar right now. And I know I had a company reach out that wanted to get some booked as well. So, uh, if you're tuning in, you're in the industry or you know, honestly, if you want to get a group of farmers in your shop, um, and have me come out and do my song and dance. Hey, I, it might not work all the time folks, but you can reach out and, uh, you know, I will bring, uh, bring the projector. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's my positive moment of the week. Um, okay. Let's go back to the mailbag here, uh, briefly. So I'm going to answer two of the questions for the sake of time. And also Chris, like great question, man, like fantastic question, but I got a phone. I need to phone at least one friend, maybe two to get any, any idea on how to answer that. All right. It's a sensitive one. So, uh, so Aiden, reached out and, and he basically asked, and I won't read it word for word, but he basically asked a couple of episodes ago, I talked about the um, those contracts where you get that small premium right now. And then for the premium, you, you put out an offer for matching bushels. So if you have a hundred bushels and someone's going to give you price of canola is $13, but they're going to give you 13 25, that 25 cent premium in exchange for an offer of matching bushels. Uh, for a futures price set in the fall. So again, I'm maybe I'm not the best to be answering this, but if you get your extra 25 cents now, they may say, you know, futures have to be, November futures have to be $600 on October, whatever, 10th, we'll say. If they're $600 on October 10th or higher, you owe me matching bushels at 600, okay? Hopefully you're following along. If the market is 550, you don't owe them anything, okay? If the market is 650, well, you owe it to them at 600. Now, the numbers and all that, I don't want you to get too stressed out and confused about the numbers. What I want to say about these contracts is that you need to be, number one, comfortable with what your offer is on the back end. Are you content with that price? If the market rallies and you sit here and say, hey, I had information at the time. It was my best decision. I'm good with it. Then that's step one. Okay. But you have to be comfortable with it. The other thing to recognize here is it's going to, it's going to handcuff your decision, crop marketing decision ability later in the growing season. Okay. So follow along here. Let's say, you know, canola futures once upon a time, knob of 24 traded at 750. Maybe you did something there. Maybe you did your first 20%. Okay. And then now you've sat here and there's been a small pop in the market and you do a little bit more and you do a little bit more. And all of a sudden you find yourself heading into the growing season or maybe at the early part of the growing season and you're maybe half sold. Now, some of you just fell off your chair. Ryan, are you nuts? 2021 wasn't that long ago. Half sold? You're crazy. Okay. Let's pump the brakes. Let's, let's just pretend. If you're half sold, um, and the market starts to rally. Yeah, something happens in the U.S. It's dry. You know, Brett uh, from D Bam WX will talk to us here in a few moments about weather. But if you you, you maybe want to sell more, but you can't because you have this firm offer out there that is dangling, and you don't know if you're going to have to deliver on those bushels or not. You maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe the markets went up a whole bunch and it looks like you're going to have to, but you really don't know. And so um, it does handcuff you. I've experienced it where I sat there and thought, geez, is that going to hit or not? Um, can I sell more? Can I, do I have to hold back? Like it, it's part of it. And, and that contract, if the market rallies and you don't produce the bushels, 
you got to figure out how to settle that thing. It's, it's going to live there and you're going to have to deal with it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a tough one. So just be cautious. The people that you're dealing with on these contracts will consider them the experts in this, right? We should. And so let them uh, guide you through it and also make sure they send you the, the, the one page or the sell sheet because they're selling these folks. They're, they're not just giving them away. They're selling them, right? They all have a goal. They need to sell some of these. And uh, some of them have budgets that they need to sell some of these things, right? So just remember that you are being, you're part of a pitch, right? And um, so know what you're signing up for. Review the sell sheet. Talk to a friend. You know, figure out if you're comfortable with this or not. So hopefully that helps. Aiden, thanks for the question, man. Appreciate it. Um, second question, final question, uh, Brad, uh, for this week, uh, Brad was wondering about, a so AFSC crop insurance values came out in Alberta and green peas are insured at 1225 a bushel and yellow peas are insured at 871. Bit of a spread there. So Brad was wondering if that price and that spread would really impact acres. And so here's what I'd say, Brad, to that question. So that spread already exists. It has existed for the last couple months. So we've been selling green peas at $14 and $15. We've been selling yellow peas at $10.25, $10.50. Can't say for sure if there's been an 11. But that spread has been even a little bit wider. And that spread has already been attempted to buy as many acres as possible. Now, if you want to, you know, if you're bored one afternoon and you want to pick up the phone and call a seed grower and say, hey, what do you got for green pea seed? You might have a busy afternoon. There's there's not much kicking around. Um, so you're going to have to make a few extra phone calls there. So I believe it's all the damage is, is already done. And that's why well, when we've been talking about green peas and selling new crop green peas, in the eat, eating our veggies section, we've been ag aggressive, as aggressive as you can be. And um, actually, I got that leads me to another point here. I just got to write it down because I don't want to talk about it quite yet. There we go. Um, so I, I, AFSC now has just confirmed that. And we'll see what Saskatchewan has for a number. And Manitoba, I can't remember if they separated out green and yellow peas for a price, an insured price. I want to say no. I, I was trying to Google it here while recording and I can't find it. So I'll, I'll have to circle back and add to this uh, question as well or to this answer. But I believe it's already happened, my friend. I believe the spread has been there. It's influenced the acres. The only thing that this price does is it just, it just bugs the yellow pea grower just a little bit. It's a little bit annoying because why is it 871 when I can sell them for 10 or 1025? But my projections for yellow peas again take this with a grain of salt but i it wouldn't surprise me my number is 850 a bushel it's been that for a while uh, i think farmers at the end of the day that could be the average price and my problem is that i need to gain more confidence in india so i need to talk to chuck more at left field i need to figure out how to be more confident in india and their purchase power for canadian yellow peas because I just don't like the China situation and the Russia China connection uh, there, so I'm 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 picking on yellow peas a little bit myself. Um, but uh, hey, you never know. Uh, never know what we'll see here. All right, again, mailbag. Uh, again, you can get a chance to head over to Nashville. So uh, yeah, send those questions in Ryan at whatthefuturespodcast.ca. Okay. Um, okay, my hot topic of the week. Actually, before I get to that, I just wanted to talk about Act of God real quick here, okay? So I have two scenarios for you. And farmers listening, tuning in, negotiations, negotiating is a blast, right? You love negotiating on your equipment purchases. You love negotiating, um, buying crop inputs. Like negotiation, farmers love negotiating. Don't forget to negotiate with your grain contracts, okay? And here's two examples from this week. Scouts honor, these have happened. First one's malt barley. 
So once upon a time, we could get an act of God on the entire malt barley contract. And in some cases, you still can. But what used to happen is they'd say, hey, our price is whatever, seven bucks. And we'll let you do like 70 bushels with act of God. So you could lock in, you know, 70 bushels at seven bucks and away you went. And, and that then went down to like 50 and then that went down to 20 bushels. Okay. But it's a negotiation folks. And even though you might not be able to negotiate price, uh, maybe you wanted 725, but you can really only get that seven out of them in markets like we're experiencing today that are in a bearish pattern, you might, I don't know, but you might want to be more aggressive and you might want to sell more bushels at the seven and you might want to extend your act of God on those bushels. And I've seen it happen. It was 20, then it went to 50. It's a negotiation, folks, for that farm. They felt comfortable at 50 bushels on their malt barley contract at that whatever price they got and uh, they were able to get that done. It's 20 on the contract. It's 20 to everybody else, but negotiate. If, if you feel like there's a need for your farm here, you can negotiate it. I saw the same thing on green peas. Green peas, we normally, we get 10, 15 bushels with act of God. That's it. You know, have fun with it. Um, but in my situation, I'm bearish the green pea market because of reasons we just talked about moments ago. We're able to get an act of God on up to 50 bushels an acre of green peas. Remember, I, I keep saying, like, secure the bag. Um, well, if you can take $14 green peas at 50 bushels and secure 700 bucks an acre. I don't know, folks. That looks pretty interesting to me. So anyways, folks, it's a negotiation. Don't forget to negotiate. And again, you might not get might not be able to move the price up from nine to ten dollars like you want to but maybe you have to sell maybe every sign points that you should be selling and uh, just negotiate those act of gods here just a little bit all right that's what i love about doing the podcast is just talking about the stories that exist across the prairies and uh, bringing a little bit of transparency because it happens out there folks there's lots of different stories even i'm not privy to but you guys do a great job of negotiation so let's celebrate that a little bit all righty. Uh, crop insurance numbers. Again, AFSC's numbers came out. I'm not going to talk about this a whole bunch, but what happened to like me when I saw these numbers? And I apologize. I don't have, I don't really have the lentil scenario in here at the moment. I was using this for a presentation further north. So I'll provide more context in the fu near future if I have to. But what this, what it did, AFSC's numbers came out and it just solidified to me that growers are going to plant that canola. Okay. And, and the reason is that you're insured at 1463 a bushel in Alberta. Saskatchewan's numbers will come out soon and it won't be that much different. So you're insured at that value. And uh, it, it moves it to a very profitable level. It's a lot better than the 13 that we're staring out there. And, and so it moved into that one and two spot in my rankings, canola and specialty canola, right? Um, so the canola acre has been bought from the insur from insurance. It, it's going in. Uh, then from there, we also saw the same thing with malt barley. It moves into my three spot at 737. That's going to buy the malt barley acre. Feed barley at 635 is good as well. A top five crop now with feed barley. You can plant these crops after experiencing some very volatile weather and dryness. You can plant these crops and, and sleep a little bit saying, geez, these returns aren't what they were the last couple of years, but they're actually not too bad. It buys these acres in, folks. That's what this does. Uh, I've got green peas coming in the sixth spot, and, but yellow peas totally fall off at 871. They totally fall off into that 13 spot. They're, they're really pushing back here. Um, and same thing with wheat. The wheat scenario is, again, higher the insured price is higher than what you can get today but um below a, a break even um in my opinion for a lot of farms and and it just shows tough slugging um the most upset grower in alberta from a crop insurance perspective is the soft white grower because you're insured at 572 a bushel 
which uh, is not good. And um, you can sell it new crop for eight. So it's one of the few crops where I look here and say, you know, what could I sell this for? It's like the only one where the price is way higher than uh, than what's it what it's insured at. So in Saskatchewan, you'd sell it at eight, bring that to SCIC and say, hey, I've sold it all at eight, insure me at eight. And there's an option where you can do that. Uh, oats I didn't talk about yet. It's at 5.11 a bushel, so it still holds in that top four spot. So anyways, um, insurance does drive behaviors and acres, and it will certainly see that this year once again. Now, egg headlines. Um, again, folks, I know that you're in tune with what's going on. You read the headlines every day. But I, I just wanted to note here, South American crop, soybean crop production levels, they continue to decline. And most of the private uh, analysts now, or, or the private firms, they're in the 140s, all right? So it might be, a, we saw some 150s, we saw some 149s, we even have some 145s. And I think Dr. Bernier, he's kind of the, the guru here when it comes to um, South American production. It's number 145. I don't know if I can find it on here. Uh, he is down, this is telling me 147, but I, I thought I saw 145, but 147 is what we'll say for now. So he cut his Brazilian soybean output by 2 million tons. All right. And every firm is cutting their production down a little bit. So you'd think that that would boost these markets a little bit, just a little bit. Unfortunately, not really seeing that soybeans had a rough day today, down 12 cents. And I'll tie it all together. You add in Argentina, which has been raised by many analysts here lately. Put the two together. Still staring down a record crop in a demand story that's faltering or, or pulling back. So I guess that's why we're not seeing it. But wanted to highlight that that's um, those numbers are continuing to decline. All right. Uh, crop price updates, folks. Honestly, it'd be a lot funner here if we could talk about bullish uh markets instead like i i have a big board behind the studio here and the only thing that really stands out to me today and i probably haven't done a great job of of checking into prices this week but honestly like canola spring wheat feed wheat like feed barley everything is there's nothing super great on the board yellow peas though uh i did see some 14s pop up for old crop yellow peas again now, last time yellow peas were at 14, we put our hand up and said, hey, sell those. And so we're going to do that again. 14's out there again, folks. Negotiate that. Get your old crop yellow peas priced. If you want to have some fun with it, tell them, hey, I'll give you some old crop at 14. Give me some new crop at 11 or 12. I don't know. Maybe they'll do something with that. But uh, give that a go. Uh, other than that, folks, geez, green peas are hanging in. I don't know. I don't really have anything fresh to talk about. That's really exciting. So we'll keep moving on. Uh, all right, let's do our eating the veggie section, and then we're going to get to Brett Waltz of BAM WX. Uh, okay, so um, I, I just wanted to um, go over, again, I did this presentation, and I had a couple of tips here. And I've been harping on you guys, you know, do your cost of production, figure out your break even. You know, make a crop marketing plan, um, sell this, that, and or consider selling. Again, I don't know you. I don't know your farm. I might be out to lunch. Seek the advice of a professional always. But here's my eating the veggies for this week. Okay, and this is from my slide deck, my presentation. Number one, evaluate everything on your farm. So 2024 is not the hard year when it comes to financials for farming in Western Canada, in my opinion. 2025 and 2026, those are the hard years, okay? 2024 is not the hard year because you have enough weather stuff going on that I think you're gonna see opportunity to price in rallies, okay? And your insurance prices are higher today than when we get this report next year at this time, they're gonna be down another 10, 15%, whatever it is, they're going lower. This is not the hard year, okay? I want you to evaluate everything on your farm. What are what are you paying for? A dollar out, 
What are you getting back in return? Okay. Review your financials, review your services, review your, uh, your inputs, review everything that you're doing and see where you can uh, gain some efficiencies here or save some money. Again, if you're spending a dollar and getting that plus in a return, uh, then obviously it makes sense to keep it. But you should evaluate everything. Our farm, we went through an exercise of evaluating, uh, doing some evaluation around some of the services that we have on the farm. And then we we um, decided to to you know put up the service, review it, review our, our level of of satisfaction, the the benefits, the pros, the cons, and then if we were to take it away, you know what could replace it, at what cost, what risk, and we went through a few exercises like this on the farm and made some decisions based around that. Now maybe there's someone listening and saying Ryan, let's say Ryan you're this is insane. That's not how you do it. Um, but anyways, that's how we do it. We're, we're looking at everything right now. We're trying to lean up a little bit because it's um, it's going to be tough here the next couple of years, in my opinion. I, I'll be the first one to be bullish, guys, but uh, it's tough slugging. OK, evaluate everything. Number two for today. Um, OK, let's go to create your ROI goal, return on investment. So. Now you know your costs, you know your break-evens. Pick a goal to aim for. If it's 5% return on investment, 4%, 3%, whatever it is, those are normal goals. If you want to put 10, 20, 30%, you can. It's just not achievable, right? Um, we've seen that the last couple of years, but we're not going to see that in 2024. But you should set a goal on what pays all the bills, what gives me an opportunity to maybe expand or or grow the farm and if i sell at these prices with x yields certain yields you know I, i'm going to survive and i'm actually going to build up the war chest for the next you know next opportunity figure that out okay uh and the third one i'll just say i've been contracting in smaller increments okay and i i think that for you to gain your confidence back for for crop marketing that would be one way to do it, okay? Small contracts. I, I've done a whole bunch of 2024 crop marketing, okay? Like I have, right? Time will tell. But some of this stuff's been done for a while. And it feels good. It feels good to get something down on paper and get after it a little bit. It feels good to start executing your crop marketing plan. I'm positive I've said that on the podcast as well. But it feels good. Smaller contracts might start to help you build up your confidence again. And pro I promise you, you'll feel better starting to pick around the edges. Again, sell the green crops, green peas, green lentils. There was oat opportunities out there to look at. There was wheat opportunities a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's, a lot, there's yellow peas out there for new crop. There's things you can do. And I strongly encourage you to brush off um, the dust on that plan and you'll feel better. Okay, but contract in smaller increments. I'm going to leave that for eating your veggies for this week. That's what I want you to think about. And, you know, you can reach out if you have more questions around that or, or whatever. But that's what I, uh, what I would put out there. Okay. Well, let's get to Brett with BAM uh, WX next. And then, uh, we'll, uh, and then I'll be back and we'll get going with uh, Marlon Travel and that trip to, to Nashville. So Brett Waltz coming up. All right, folks, I've got Brett Waltz with BAM WX joining me here once again. Brett, how's your day going? It's great. You know, it's been uh, beautiful here. It was 66 degrees here yesterday, maybe got up to 68, I think. So it just uh, feels like spring. It's easy to forget that it's still uh, late February, but we'll take it. Are, are you getting that uh, kind of that spring energy yet? Like my wife all of a sudden is like looking out the window and she's like, Hey, we're booking our camping. We're planning our spring projects already. And I'm like, it's February. We're like, yeah. are you getting that spring energy down there as well? Yeah, I am. Uh, we had a, an event yesterday where we got to spend some time outside and I'm just like, it was sunny and in the sixties and it was great. And I was like, I'm ready for this every single day, nice. ready to dust off the golf clubs, ready to put out the, the patio furniture. So I I'm ready. I'm all for it. Perfect. All right. Uh, one thing I look forward to at this time every year, you guys do a great job of webinars and kind of 
taking a peek at, at what's coming for for uh, yeah. outlooks. Uh, anything on the horizon for uh, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. So uh, next Wednesday, February twenty eighth, uh, eleven a.m. We do have our annual planting season webinar. So uh, we're going to go over what conditions are going to be for the planting season: late frost and freeze risk. Uh, you, you know, uh, are there going to be increasing dry areas or maybe areas that are a little too wet? Uh, right. And then, of course, severe weather. And I think that is actually really good timing because I do think in the U.S. we're going to have an uptick in severe weather uh, okay. as we work into next week. So it's uh, bamwx.com slash webinar. It's free to sign up. I would highly encourage anybody to hop on and join us. And I will do my best to put it in the show notes as well. So make it nice and easy for folks. Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's chat some weather now. Let's talk sure. about U.S. weather. What what do you, what's on the uh, uh, on your minds right now when it comes to U.S. weather? Yeah, I mean, I think the big story is just how warm it is. Uh, I mean, really coast to coast over the next two weeks, it's just well above normal. And really for a lot of the ag belt and the Midwest, it's just 10 to 15 degrees above normal pretty consistently. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it has felt like spring. It's going to continue to feel like spring. But then I think attention next week turns to the pattern getting a little more active. And I do think some early season severe weather potential is on the table to end February and to start March for the central part of the country into the Ohio Valley. When you say severe, is it from like a like a cold weather perspective or from yeah. like uh, moisture events? Like what, what would you say? That no, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I, I'm talking mainly about you know, uh, tornado threats, wind threats, hail threats. Uh, we've got a powerful cold front that's going to work through really right through the eastern plains in the Ohio Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's next Wednesday, later next Wednesday. And so two days in a row uh, of maybe, you know, wind threats, maybe a couple of tornado threats, hail uh, I think that's on the table next Tuesday and into Wednesday. And so, uh, again, kind of weird to be talking about for, for late February. Uh, it's been a long time that I can remember us having severe weather chances this early in the season, really in, in a widespread manner. Does, is that, I know you'll cover it in the webinar next week, but is that giving you any indication for what's to come later on this spring? Yeah, somewhat, but I also think that uh, in situations where we have strong El Ninos like we've had this year, sometimes we get a fast start to severe weather season because it, it tends to be warmer into the early part of spring, but it tends to slow down a little bit in El Nino years or coming off of them at least later into the season. And so uh, really it's just kind of, of typical uh, of what normally happens when we have these strong El Nino states. Okay. Okay. Um, what about as you, you know, take a peek further north into yeah. Canada here? Uh, our pattern's been very, I'd say, consistent for quite a while. We did have a cold a uh, cold snap here in January, but yeah. it's nice and warm. It's, uh, you know, the little snow I have is melting again here once again. Um, is that going to change or is it going to stay the same for a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You all are uh, up into Canada far enough north that... Uh, as the jet stream really shifts north with these storm systems that were that I was talking about into next week in the U.S., I do actually think that there's some opportunities for some additional winter weather, maybe some snow chances uh, over the next seven to ten days or so. I think there's a system early next week and then maybe another one into next weekend. And so while I wouldn't say it's notably cold, I actually do think that you all have a, a, in a spot for a decent storm track the next seven to ten days. I don't necessarily think that's going to stick around, though. I think the further you work into early March, that kind of backs off. You get a little bit warmer and a little bit less active. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll cross our fingers because I I don't know anyone that wouldn't would not take a snow right now. We'd all yeah. appreciate uh, some of that weather. So uh, we can't get on our snowmobiles here, Brett. We can't <laughs> we can't do anything right now. The, everyone's getting frustrated. So yeah. Yeah, uh, I uh, we've had some of that with snow removal companies around here. Just, you know, need the snow, need the snow. We got a little bit last week, lasted for about a day. It's been gone for a while now. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, so your webinars coming up. That's going to be the big one. We've talked about the U.S. We've talked about Canada. I know there's been a little bit of chat about South America. Mm -hmm. Is there anything there you want to touch on briefly? 
Yeah, you know, uh, Argentina really actually kind of started the season all, off decently compared to last year, which was was so hot and dry. Uh, but I do think that the season there is ending on a, a hotter and drier note. And, and so that's an area of concern that I think needs to be watched. And then you look at a year like 2016 uh, in, in parts of Brazil, especially central Brazil, it did dry out uh, kind of further into March and April. And, and so I, I think that that is a risk, though there could be some timely rains in the short term. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, okay, so anything else you want to cover off uh, heading into the webinar? Yeah, you know, leading up to the webinar, just wanted to let people know that we do have a little 20% off promo for, for agriculture, the agriculture industry. So if you reach out to us, you can go to our website, bamwx.com and, uh, you know, hit the contact BAM button. We're happy to happy to help you out. Um, and get you in on that 20% off uh, off promo just just strictly for agriculture to, to kind of celebrate the start of the season here. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's great. Uh, folks can definitely check that out. I, I did a presentation the other day uh, to some growers. There's about 60 growers in the room, and uh, it's a bit of a marketing type update strange i never gave any advice on where to sell your crops but still managed to speak for about an hour but anyways i gave like a little bit of a homework list and a, a to-do list and one of the things i put up there was just subscribing to a weather service and i actually i actually highlighted more of a u.s based weather service because in my opinion and i'm not a weather person at all i have no idea what i'm talking about but the severity of the weather this year, it's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be key to mm. keep an eye on what's going on in, in your backyard, Brett, what's happening down in yeah. the Corn Belt, because it's going to have an influence on these markets. And markets are in the they're in the tank. It's been a tough winter. Markets trending lower. But if there's going to be any excitement, we're going to want to watch that U.S. weather. So that was one of my little takeaways for the group. And uh, so, awesome. folks... If you uh, if you're if you're tuning into the podcast today, um, save yourself twenty percent and and uh, reach out to Bam WX. So, uh, thanks, Brett. Appreciate you coming on yep. here once again. I'm gonna tune into the webinar next week, and uh, I'll get you. Uh, you know, we'll chat maybe uh, later part of March and see what yeah. things are looking like for spring. So. That sounds great. I really appreciate you having me on, and I always look forward to it. And yeah, hope to see you all at the, at the webinar next week. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Take care. Yep. Thank you. All right, another update here from Brett. I uh, always appreciate having those guys jump on the pod. And again, folks, uh, spring weather outlooks, I, I just encourage you to jump into those and, and even have them on in the background. See what's shaking out there for weather around the globe and in the U.S. And you never know, it might just impact your crop marketing plan here as we enter the spring of 2024. All right, uh, we're approaching the uh, the later part of the show here. We're going to bring in my mom uh, making her podcast debut, uh, Angel with Marlin Travel. She's going to give us some insight on Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, folks, I've harped on it enough this episode. Send me a question. I'll try to get you an answer. And uh, we're going to give that away later on this month. You'll notice, haven't put it anywhere on social media. Just listeners tuning into the show getting a chance to potentially win a trip to Nashville. If I were you, I, again, uh, this is selfish of me, but if you share this with a friend, the show, again, number one, thank you if you share the show. I, I appreciate that. But if you went and said, hey, there's like 20 people in this contest. I'm going to go talk to my buddies, you know, and, and maybe there's a way where someone else wins and they take you with them. Maybe you say, hey, Bob, put your name in here. If you win, if I win, we're going to Nashville. We're going to, you know, check out some Tennessee whiskey or whatever it's going to be. I don't know. Share the show with folks. I appreciate uh, all the comments and, and all the feedback I get. So let's get into it here with Marlon Travel. All right, folks. I've got Angel Denis joining me uh, from Marlon Travel in Saskatoon. As you can probably tell by the last name, this is my mom joining me on the podcast here and of course folks we are sending two of you away a pair uh one winner but a pair of tickets to head to nashville tennessee at some point in 2024 that's basically up to you uh, but we're going to draw for that later on here the in the month of march and to get entered all you have to do is ask me a question you email ryan at whatthefuturespodcast.ca 
of course, uh, that is sponsored by Pioneer Seeds. Uh, Jacob and Becky Boychuk of Tower Farms. Send me a question like Brad, Aiden, Scott. Um, there's a few others I'm missing here. Um, they've sent in questions here over the last week. And uh, you're going to hear those answers shortly. Uh, but uh, good odds, folks, to, to get uh, entered to potentially win a trip here to Nashville, Tennessee. So, Mom, how's your day going? It's good. Busy, but good. Good. Trying to sort out a curling bonds pill next weekend. Yep. Yep. Nice. And uh, I know you got travel plans coming up here as well, but before we get into that why don't you do a little intro uh, uh about your background is this the first, po first podcast you've ever been on by the way there we go there's the yes yeah. okay all right uh let's just do a quick intro what's what's your story my story is i've been a travel agent it will be 20 years this year mm -hmm. yeah and uh i'm retiring this summer for real <laughs> sure. um I've traveled, I was lucky and blessed enough to be able to travel to many, many places. Mm -hmm. Europe, um, the only place I haven't been to is Asia yet, but it is on my bucket list. And do you have, is there something that stands out, a trip that stands out or a location that stands out for you as the best one? Depends what you're looking for. You want to relax, you want to have, enjoy some sun, you would go to Mexico, Dominican, mm -hmm. Jamaica, it's been phenomenal if mm -hmm. you want a history lesson and see culture and things like that you got to go to europe yeah what about for yeah. you and dad what's the best one you've been on every one of them vacations are all good hey no bad ones when you're married to a farmer and you take him on a holiday and he leaves the farm behind he's a totally different man so every holiday we've taken has been the best and you did get him to go across the pond into Europe this yeah, last I did. Year, couple months I ago. Did, so there yeah. you go. But it had to do with farm. We went to Agritechnica. So that was a boost. But at least I got to see what I wanted to see as well. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. All right. And what do you got next for holidays? Where, where are you going next? Mexico. Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Nice. It's always nice. Uh, pretty much a guarantee of beautiful weather. The people are mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. Cool. The beers are cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've been there a few times, right? So you kind of, you have a little sense of uh, community down there now, right? You kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know some people. A few times, yeah. But yeah. it's good. It's, yeah. Good Can't stuff. wait. All right. So for the podcast, we, we initially thought we'd send someone to Vegas. That, that was the initial conversation. And then after doing a little bit more research and talking to some folks, Nashville, Tennessee seems to be a little bit of a, a buzz or a hotspot right now. Have you been to Nashville and do you, is there anything that stands out? Uh, yes, I've been to Nashville. It's, they call it the new Vegas without the slots, but it's music, music, music. It's party going. You go to, down to Beale Street. You can go to the where BB King, Elvis Presley. They all started, and it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. There's, um, I think it's called Parthenon. There's a Roman building there that's built. It's a replica of the Parthenon. That's amazing to look at too. There are museums. Yeah. Uh, music Hall of Fame, but you cannot forget the Grand Old Opry. Right. Is that still, like, is there shows regularly then? Over Pretty there, much or? every yeah. day, every day. There's wow. school, and it's like, you really don't know who's going to be on that night, but it's all okay. great performers. Yeah. And people that you've known, like, you might, oh gosh, when I went, uh, who did we see now? I can't remember, but it was a new and upcoming singer that was out. Number one mm -hmm. hits. Like, it was just amazing. Nice. Nice. So you got lots of music. How about the food? How's the food over there? Wow. That's great. If you're yeah. on a diet, it's not so great. Yeah. But you've got to, you've got to broaden your horizons and check it out. Yeah. 
I think uh, over in, in the big city here where I live, uh, they call it like Nashville hot chicken or something like that is a popular thing that's popping up in restaurants. So I'm assuming there's some hot chicken to grab in, in Nashville, Tennessee as well. So Yeah, and if you yeah. want to, to as well, there's this uh, boat. It's called the John, uh, not the Johnny Cash. It's called the General Jackson. Okay. And you can take a dinner cruise on that in the evening and it's got entertainment, great food. Yeah. Any any like day trips out of out of the city there? Like was there anything you popped out of the city for and then came back? Yeah, you could you could scoot down to uh, Memphis, Tennessee and check out Elvis Presley's Graceland. It's a couple yep. hours away. Yep. Um, but there are tours that you can take to do all these things. Um, our favorite tour company that we use for day trips and specific like the Grand Ole Opry, things like that. We use a tour company called Viator and anyone can book on Viator. They okay. just go to our Marlin Travel 1363 and go to other activities and they can book directly and have help or backup if you need extra help with your booking, then we have control of that. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. a site where you can look at all the tours and everything going on. Yeah, and okay. there's pages of them. Nice. Okay. Um, so Memphis is, was one of the day trips there. Uh, Elvis is home nearby, right? Right. Well, so, yeah. And there's so, also this um, estate. It's called the Bell Mead Estate, and it's a winery, and they also breed thoroughbreds. So, okay. You like horses, you like wine, you want to take it. The, the, the property is unbelievable yeah. you can even take a tour to see all of the uh, country western stars home if you want to if you're into that okay yeah yeah cool how about it's, um did you go look at any uh like tennessee whiskey tours or anything oh, like there's, that clearly? there's plenty <laughs> plenty of uh tours include for uh breweries yep. yeah well it we sounds like a party definitely we sounds like a party to go but i guess i'll have to go back to nashville yeah. check it out yeah you always have to leave something you do behind so you, like you can't do it all in a small amount of time so no no when but we were in hawaii time. there was something that we missed and we missed it for a reason so we can go back so yeah yep cool uh, well, thanks for joining me to touch a little bit on uh, on uh, Tennessee here, Memf or Memphis, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, any uh, like, is anybody? Is there any like hot vacation out there right now that's catching some buzz? Like, are people booking a a different spot that's popular right now, or is there anything that stands out vacation wise? Um, with everything with COVID, with. Um little kerfluffles, you want to call them with the airlines and things like that. People yeah. were a little standoffish, but this year has been actually pretty smooth sailing, which is nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, Price-wise, Dominican and Cuba are affordable. Okay. Uh, from Mexico, getting pricier and pricier. Jamaica okay. is still at the standstill, so there's really not... Depends what you want to do. People like Mexico because it's only a five-hour flight and compared yep. to the Dominican, it's a seven, all these things. Sure. But one thing I wanted to point out is that Edmonton and Calgary are super lucky because they have flights going out pretty much every day to any destinations, and the pricing is great. Also, going to Nashville, direct flights from Edmonton, direct flights yep. from Calgary. Yep. Uh, so if you have a winner from that area, they're going to enjoy that. Well, I hope they invite me along when they win. So thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today, Mom. Um, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, do you have an email address? I know you're retiring this summer, but in between now and then, um, best it's way to contact you. Angel.deni@marlintravel.ca. All right, perfect. Okay, thanks again, Mom. Uh, have a great time in Mexico and. Uh, 
Again, folks, uh, all you have to do is email me a question. It could be a grain marketing question, a farm business question. It could be anything. I actually got some hard ones here. Chris from up in the Peace region. can't remember the exact name of the town. Spirit River, maybe. Maybe that's it. He asks a doozy of a question. I don't even know if I can answer it on the podcast this week. So that's all you have to do. Email me, ryan at whatthefuturespodcast.ca. His question was about equipment, um, equipment prices. And so anyways, folks, uh, anything and everything's on the table. So just send me a question and you'll get entered to win uh, potentially a trip for two to Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks, Thanks again, Mom. Take yep. care. Bye. Love you. Well, that's going to do it, folks, for episode 16. Thank you so much for following along the journey here. Um, I've got uh, lots of stuff coming out. My episode with Christy of Rebellion Farms here should drop any moment. Uh, I've got uh, Egg Eye 3 uh, for a special episode coming out on Monday. So if you're looking for some different uh, options here on risk management and crop insurance, check out that episode with Ray Bouchard. That drops on Monday. Uh, lots of different things going on uh, with the podcast, folks. So I appreciate uh, everything. I appreciate you guys tuning in, reaching out, commenting. I'm almost basically out of swag. Um, I got a few orders to fill here, but I'm down to the nitty gritty. I've got some uh, box of stuff going out to Manitoba. We're uh, got a young couple getting married. We're going to support their social events and some stuff over there. Got some hats going down into Southern Saskatchewan as well. Uh, but not a lot kicking around here. So thanks for those that reached out uh, just about out of swag. But uh, that's it, folks, for episode 16. Uh, stay safe out there. I'm out.